Hey, it's Nick and Eric, and we are back from Lemons Halitosis at Hallet in Oklahoma. Now, this is a new track in a new state. We've been told it was awesome for years. They didn't have paddock access, so we couldn't do it. They finally built a tunnel, and it was great. Now, we go to places large and small, corporate and family run. This is small, family run, and I've gotta say, everything worked. They did everything they said they were gonna do, the corporate giant places don't always do that. So this was a really great experience for us. Yeah, they also have whole Bob, the corner worker, who gets angry when you miss flags. That's pretty great. And honestly, this thing, not just whole Bob, but the whole place is really what the industry standard should be. These guys get our sense of humor. We fit right in. They fit right in with us. And they even start every day of a race weekend by playing Glenn Miller's In the Mood over the PA, sung by chickens. <laughs> The track itself is a roller coaster. I mean, I'm from California. I had no idea Oklahoma has elevation. It's built on top of this hill. It's a scenic place. We really hope to be back next year. The teams were great. There were some eh, kind of expected Oklahoma themes, which we'll get to later. Now, one of the fringe benefits of going to Tulsa is it's a place I know pretty well. I met my wife there, and in doing some pre-race research to look up stuff to do in our downtime, I discovered that the Russian art punk group Pussy Riot was receiving the Woody Guthrie Award in Tulsa that weekend, so we made it a point to check them out at the Canes Ballroom. That was hella sweet, and Lemons Judge Emeritus Phil Gredden even flew in to check out Pussy Riot with us and some other Lemons people spectacular at this race we had an abundance of malaise era sports cars or sporty ish cars signed up and i dressed accordingly if you don't know what the malaise era is we'll give you a very quick primer here basically from 1973 ish to 1984 ish all of the cars that were being built and sold in america completely sucked for a variety of reasons and therefore they are all perfect for lemons yeah, you had Team Lowball with their V8-powered AMC Hornet Sportabout. Don't forget the Sportabout. We had the Speedy Gonzalez Pontiac Sunbird. These guys have been around forever. They've won nearly everything except an overall win. They did not win overall this time around. And then you had the 84 Audi 4000 of Rowdy Racing. 84 is at the tail end of the Malays era, but let's include them. You might remember these guys as Team Blue Goose. Some of their team raced a horrible CRX way back at Altamont in the prehistoric era of lemons. Smack dab in the middle of the Malays era, we had the Caddy Daddy Diesel Volkswagen Rabbit from 1977. These guys regularly punch above their weight. We will cover a few more Malays era cars in the moments to come here. There really wasn't a whole lot of but terrible to report on at this event. Really, uh, it was just all hella sweet, including the Slowpoke Safety Squad, their Honda Civic. They're total beginners with working on and racing cars. They had an automatic base model Civic. They replaced their very first head gasket, and they still beat a bunch of teams. They were great. We also had Jeff Gorton's Racing in their Monte Carlo Z34, always worth a mention for the mashup of Jeff Gordon and the Gorton's Fisherman, uh, if for no other reason than their sponsorship on the side of the car by Buzzy Wet Fart Exhausts. Call Buzzy Wet Fart Exhaust today. 1-800-WET-FART. Okay, on to the winners. Winning overall again was Onset Tetanus Racing. This is a team that includes Troy Hogan. We mentioned it in the NOLA wrap-up. They had been trying for 15 years to win a race. They finally won at NOLA. They turned around and at the very next race here at Hallett, they won again. For a lot of the race, another 15-year veteran team, Tarp Racing, was giving Tetanus a run for their money. Tarp finally blew up. But towards the end of the race, Troy from Tetanus was over there helping Tarp get back on track. That's what this is all about. Even if you're fighting for the win, you're helping each other. The Class B fight was your classic battle between a Honda Fit and a Honda CRV. Citroen Motorsports prevailed in their CRV. This is a team of no kidding Dutch windmill engineers, and they pretty much only won when the Slow Bros Honda Fit blew a hole in its engine 10 minutes from the end. These guys promised they're actually going to bring us a Citroen, so we're pretty excited about that. 
The Class C win went to another malaise car, the Team Skid Steer Mercury Bobcat. We featured this car in a Lemons World episode. The Team Captain Greg is one of the handful of people that has been bugging us for years to go to Hallett. We went, they came, they won Class C. That was hella sweet. Heroic Fix went to still another Malays era machine, the 1981 BMW E21 of Barrel Racers. Now, these guys had to fix a bunch of stuff in tech, like their roll cage, and they had to replace their exhaust. They were happy to undertake those things. They had a great attitude. But really, really what makes this a heroic fix is they took the ultimate driving machine, a BMW 3 Series, and improved it immensely with the 4.3 liter Chevy V6 and automatic transmission of an S10. That is some refinement right there. And as it turns out, that V6 is just a little bit heavier than the stock engine that was in it. Kind of made for some interesting handling characteristics. Everybody thought this was the most entertaining car to watch on the track. That's how you fix a BMW for lemons. I Got Screwed went to H-Ton Racers of BMW E30. This is a bunch of motorcycle racers. It was their second ever Lemons race. They blew up a wheel bearing on the test day and then the infamous BMW Guibo. Is that how you say it? Uh, I think it's Guibo? Mm, I don't think, I think it's Ju Isaias, Isaias. Anyway, it's a rubber drive shaft coupler and it broke on lap three of the race, screwed up their drive shaft. They went back and forth to Tulsa, which is a 40 minute drive each way to get the pieces to put it back together. That took them essentially a full day just to get the parts. They finally got it screwed back together. They put it in gear to get on track. Something in the clutch linkage exploded. They spent another entire day trying to fix it. They got about two laps total. They got screwed. At least the car looks cool. The Yokohama Road Mangler Cup went to low speed, high drag, and their Ford Focus. Of note, these guys did a trunk monkey theme, which is one of those great deep automotive references from like the 1990s from a dealership in Oregon or something. I don't know. Just watch. <laughs> Judge's Choice went to the Dunning Cruisers and their Ford Thunderbird. We saw these guys at Road Atlanta last year with a failed Black Knight Monty Python shtick. The team captain grabbed some more teammates, bought an old V8 manual Thunderbird Lemons car out of Texas, and rebranded the team as the Dunning Cruisers Effect. That's a great team name. Look for a video soon on some of our favorite Lemons team names. Back to these guys, the Dunning Cruisers is of course a play on the Dunning-Kruger effect. I know exactly what that is. That's where when you get kidnapped, you develop a psychological bond with your captor. That's totally what the Dunning-Kruger effect is. I don't think that's right. I think that's, I think the Dunning-Kruger effects when the people with the least amount of competence overestimate their ability and the people with the most competence underestimate their I'm not, I don't know you're probably right anyway these guys uh, they had their own like pre-race podium and they talk some mad to the judges because obviously they can do better than the judges at that too and they prove their point by finishing the bottom half of the field and running roughly the same pace as their captors Organizer's Choice went to Caca Fuego, which is a brand new team. They towed all the way from Albuquerque with their crusty desert fine Toyota Celica notchback. Why you rude classic. Although this is another Malays era find. It had the famously bad and lemons Toyota 20R, which as you know, is indestructible everywhere in the world, except for on a lemons racetrack. Yeah, the team's resident old guy threw some old school road racing cheat at it, which we can stomach a little bit on a Celica with stock engine from the Malays era. And another member sourced an aftermarket fuel injection setup that made it almost as fast in a straight line as a Mercury Bobcat. All that put aside, they were so excited to be at Lemons, and this era of car obviously is exactly what we want to see. We love their attitude. They were great noobs. We cannot wait to see them back at another race. 
Now we said there was going to be some Oklahoma-centric theme, so here we go. The regional award was the Pretty OK Oklahoma theme, which went to the Dipsticks, which had a Jetta and a VW Beetle. We've always enjoyed watching these guys in the inevitable trail of semi-modern Volkswagen carnage that follows their turbo Jetta and Beetle. As usual, they had some mechanical woes, although both of their cars were running at the finish, so there's that. However, they brought us one of the two themes that we expected, the Rodgers and Hammerstein musical, Oklahoma. Chicks and ducks and geese better scurry when I take you out in the Surrey, when I take you out in the Surrey with the bridge on top. It was very entertaining. They seemed to have an okay weekend, although leaving the track, they flat spotted the Beatles' tires. Here's a pro tip. Take off the parking brake before you drive off with the car on the tow dolly. Halloween Meets Gasoline went to Tarp Racing in their Ford Mustang. Now, we mentioned their BMW earlier. This is the team's second car, a 1990s Mustang, and they took home the award with the second most obvious theme for Oklahoma, Joe Exotic and the Tiger King, the show that kept us enraptured during the pandemic. Now, as it turns out, Joe Exotic's uh, park... Is it a park? I think it's more of a zoo. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's a... Uh... Isaias. Isaias. Anyway, it was right between Tarp's home in Dallas and the track in the middle of Oklahoma, so it seemed like a natural fit. They didn't phone it in either. Carol Baskin was there from Big Cat Rescue. There was constantly a feud between Carol and Joe Exotic. There were tiger feedings. Even Joe Exotic's helmet was in character. This is how you do it, people. Very well done. The Index of Effluency Grand Prize in Lemons went to We're Just Here for the SR in their Chevy Blazer. This was a dark horse in the category of expected Oklahoma themes. They had a theme that worked on many levels. Now, some of you may be familiar with Oklahoma University's Boomer Schooner. It comes out at football games and it has handling that's questionable on the level of, I don't know, a 1990s General Motors SUV. Now, these guys don't half-ass their themes at all. You may remember their big font Isuzu Pup and the Great Picker theme on the Blazers' debut. They also dressed, along with the Boomer Schooner, as OK Boomer, complete with wraparound sunglasses and Corvette racing attire. The car also had a bunch of Boomer sayings on it, like NASCAR died with Dale, and of course, the Oklahoma State University football coach's famous rant. I'm a man! I'm 40! Now, we don't give out the index of effluency for a good theme alone. You also have to perform. This team ran for a long time. They were leading Class C, and they almost won it. But then the schooner top kind of disintegrated, and then the rear suspension broke a little bit. They fixed that relatively quickly. They took off the remains of the Boomer schooner. That cost them the C-Class win, but they still finished 11th overall in a Boomer Schooner. That's hella sweet, well-deserved index of affluency. And here is Lemons in a Nutshell. Are you familiar with calf fries? No, is it, is it testicles? It is testicles. It tastes like testicles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had Rocky Mountain Oysters before. They're good testicles, they're just cold. Every second you don't subscribe, or watch one of these videos, another Vega is sent to the crusher. Won't you help us save Classic?